Hey, Cozy Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about the technical difficulties that have come and strewn their way into the philosophies of today. What do I mean? Well, there are some ideas that have stuck around because of technical problems we've had in the past. Some of them have actually resurfaced and are currently relevant. It's kind of a, or they're making a comeback, as some people say. I'm talking about vinyl. I'm wearing a hat. Let's get into this. Vinyl, as if you have too much bass content in your record, when you make your record, your needle is going to skip and your record won't play properly. So when you do your mixing, you need to reduce the bass content and it will reduce that problem. I would consult someone if you're going to make a vinyl record like that does it professionally. I do not do I do not do vinyl releases professionally. So that's a, that's an area I have yet to really research. But you'd want to consult a professional, but that's a, that's a something that exists today that if you do a digital release, you'll never have a problem like that. Another there's only a couple of these. Another one is when you are doing when you are doing 16-bit uh, releases, I've heard a lot of people incorrectly reference what that number like controls. Like, it basically controls the amount of noise in your signal. People think that they, I don't know, they get all these weird ideas. So all I'm going to say, because it does get a little dicey and detail-oriented, is go check out my digital audio basics. The way it's taught to a lot of people isn't necessarily. I mean, it's one way of thinking about it, but it's not true at the same time. And I'm not going to dive into the details, details here. In the description, there will be a link to the Digital Audio Basic series. I recommend you check it out because people often skip methods of encoding and what the different encoding schemes there are. Because you can get an entire signal with just one bit. It's the Sony format for, uh, for their, I believe it's their archival format. And you basically have this insanely high sample rate. But as you can see... The, you know, six, that 16 bits, what it actually means and the way people paint it to mean what it means isn't necessarily true. And they're also teaching it like we're using these mega old converters that like, I guarantee you, if you own a current converter, you pretty much don't use one of those unless you're an audiophile guy who's really into like the old sounds and stuff. So if you're out there, you probably know loads more than I do. But anyways, check that series out. We'll go over some of the details there when it comes to like sample rate and bit depth and what those like actually can control and then the last thing i really quick want to touch on in this one that does creep its way into here is if you're mixing with analog stuff this is more specifically referenced towards tape when you're recording to tape there's a noise floor actually there's a noise floor when you record to anything even digital has a noise floor but it's really 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 soft um so the difference between your noise floor and your signal is a big deal because if you send your signal through a process, let's say you send your signal through something that turns it down. So your noise floor is your noise floor. Your noise floor is called your noise floor because it can't get any softer. It's the noise floor. Like, well, not because it can't get any softer, but that's where the noise exists in the system. It's not going down. So if you turn the volume down, your noise floor stays, it's happy to stay right there. So if you've got noise and when you record your signal, you record the noise floor with it. So you've recorded the noise floor. If you turn your signal down, and then turn it back up later in the chain, whoop, your noise comes with it. And now your signal sounds really noisy. Do this enough times, and before you know it, noise is on top. And now your signal just sounds like this. So bad, it's called gain staging. Bad gain staging can really ruin this. It's when you turn down your signal and then turn it up unnecessarily later. You want to keep your signal as loud as possible the whole way through so as to preserve this ratio. You only really begin to, you only turn down the signal when you're going to mix it. So that's something that you want to be aware of and know about when you're working with an analog console, uh, because the same thing goes for electronics. I've seen some weird gain staging with, with new, especially when I was new, I made the same mistakes. You just, you just turn stuff up and down in ways that don't make a whole lot of sense. So you want your signal to be as hot as possible without clipping. Um, so you get a really clean, nice signal that you can then mix later and you don't, you leave the noise floor, you know, down here, you don't turn it up, but some people, you know, they'll turn. Their preamps, some preamps actually engage a pad if you turn it, uh, the, pre, the trim knob up a certain, by a certain amount. And so if you don't need to gain up your signal through the preamp, don't gain it up. Just let it go through the preamp because sometimes when you have to gain it up, you actually have to turn it up more. And you have to look at the block diagram for this. So what ends up happening is without you knowing, your, your noise floor gets a little bit of oomph just from that. And then what they'll do is they'll have their, their fader down below down and then they'll push their master up high they'll do weird stuff and it will cause your noise floor to get pushed up bumped up in the process and you don't get as clean a signal and then when you try to mix it later on it's a lot harder to deal with 
So just good gain staging and understanding that. So every time you send it through another bus or whatever, so when we move into digital systems, that noise floor goes way, way, way down. So uh, an analog system, now basically what that means is when you record to a digital system, depending on your converters, some people will spend outrageous amounts of money to get super high quality converters for this exact reason. But if you, if you do your mixes for digitally recorded signals, you can have it down to like negative 12. Even some, I've even seen some people go as low as negative 18 dBFS and you can boost it right back up. No problem. Again, that's covered in the digital basic series. And the reason why it is, is because the digital noise floor is way, way, way low. Some people are going to argue that like, you know, through sending it through multiple buses and different paths, you'll bring that signal back up. And yeah, sure. They're right. Depending on the processing you're doing, but it's going to be such a negligible difference. Like it's going to be so tiny and no one's going to care, but most people generally accepted the negative six range. People get scared when you go lower, but when you do the, when you run the numbers and look how tiny some of this stuff is you're like, Oh, you're like, Oh, this is not that big of a deal. It's not super crazy. Most of the time when you're recording, it's going to be your environment that gets in your way. So if you have like a bad environment, that's going to add the noise floor higher up than what the digital system would give you. We're talking about theoretics here. The digital system could could do that now if you depending on your recording of course you're going to be capturing room ambience and stuff that's going to be a lot higher up on the chain so that's why negative six and nine are usually where people will sit so depending on the type of ambience you have in your recording the other problem is when you're dealing with someone else's recordings it's that ambience so if it depends it all depends on the recording at this point the system is no longer the issue system used to be an issue no longer is really an issue it's mostly the recordings now and just how good you can get out of them so like when I record in this room, for example, I'm going to have a pretty low noise floor and one that I can deal with and it's not a big problem. Sometimes uh, it can become an issue though. So I may consider going to a professional, a more professional setting like a, uh, a studio that's got a tracking booth that's suited for, for the type of recording I want to do. That's that. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.